Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. We're going to be doing text animations. Now, this is a little bit more of a complex animation, um, but you're going to learn some great things in this quick tutorial. And as you can see, it's only done with two keyframes. So what makes this cool is it's very customizable in order to create all sorts of different looks that you want. So let's start with a new composition to recreate something like this. So command N on your keyboard to bring up a new composition. Give it the settings you want. Give it a name. And then I'm going to put a background on as well. So that's just Command Y or Control Y on the keyboard. We'll bring up the new solid. And we'll just keep it blue because I like blue. So let's grab my text tool. Let's just write something. Go ahead and center that. And we're going to be using the text animation tools that is right here. So when you scroll down your text and you twirl down into these properties, you can see there's this little animate button. If we click here, first thing I'm going to do is enable per character 3D. And then what I want to do is I'm going to apply all transform properties. And we've got this animator 1. And I'm going to give this a new name. And I'm going to call it start. And then in the range selector, down in advanced, I'm going to switch this to characters excluding spaces. And then ramp up. And it's not going to look any different until you do something. So let's go down to scale and bring the scale down to zero. Okay, and so when you're using the ramp up shape in the advanced, your range selector, you're not going to really use the start and end, and how you're going to do it is with the offset. And why I did the ramp up is because I wanted them to kind of overlap the animations. If you don't do that, then it'll just do one letter, and then the next, and then the next, and I want them to kind of overlap. And the amount of overlap is right here. This is at 100% overlap. So this is at 100% when the very last letter is at 0% and everything in between. If I want just a few letters, if I go into here to this end and I set that to 20%, let's say 25%, and then this offset, I'm going to set that at negative 25% to start. And so that's going to be my keyframe of everything I'm going to be animating. So start at negative 25%, keyframe that, go forward, and then bring it to 100. And then we can see here, that's just your basic grow, your basic scale. Um, let's add some more to this. And what we're going to do is we are going to add another set of animations. So this one was called Start. I'm going to highlight that, duplicate it. And the second one we're going to call Overshoot. And what this is, is it's going to overshoot the initial animation and then settle down to how we want it at the end. So what I need to do is come into this offset and this range selector. I'm going to open up the range selector on both of them, both the start and the overshoot, and let's do a couple of things. First, let's take and do an expression on the end. So I'm going to hold down Option or Alt on the keyboard, click on End, and pick whip it to the start end. So if we ever want to go in and change this amount, then this will automatically adjust to it. Now the next thing we're going to do is on this offset, we can go ahead and take off the keyframes, put it to zero, it doesn't matter what it is because we're going to add an expression to this. And the expression is going to be a time offset. So hold down Alt or Option, click on the, click on the stopwatch, and let's pick whip to offset. And then down here, we're going to add a little bit more to this. Let's go dot value at capital A time capital T and then in parentheses type time minus and then in another set of parentheses go one divided by and I'm putting 24 because that's my frame rate of my composition. So if you have a different frame rate put a different number there. If you have 30 or 60 put that number there. Close that parenthesis close another parenthesis because we had because we had one right here at the value at time and then that's it and what that's going to do is it's going to offset this number by one frame according to that number so it's going to be one frame behind and so what I'm going to do is before I get any further I'm going to add a slider to this so if we go to effects expression controls slider let's give it a name frame delay and then right down here where I have that one, I'm going to highlight that and then pick whip that slider. 
So then let's say, let's set this to like three. So that it's gonna be a three frame delay. And what that what it's going to do, so this will make sense in a little bit. So let's go halfway in between so we can see the animation. So this start is where we want our text to start. So we want it to start at scale 0%. Now the overshoot is what we want it to do halfway through before it settles down at this normal, uh, normal scale. So if I come in here and put this scale to say 150, then let's take a look at this. See it overshoots it up a little bit higher and then it bounces back down into the normal size. So anything we do in this overshoot section will be in the middle and we can even come in here and let's rotate. So that's pretty cool. We can come in and change the anchor point. And you can see how versatile this little effect is. So let's bring this rotate back down to zero, anchor point back down to zero, and let's just move the position position up and then on the start let's move the position down so now the letters are coming up and kind of bouncing so that is the quick tip so you create two different animation layers one is the start and that's where all of your letters are starting from and one is the overshoot and what you want it to kind of hit before it settles down into its normal size and of course the normal size is just with no effects on it at all so that is the tutorial. Um, if you need this expression for this offset, um, that is going to be down in the description below, or you can just copy it from how I did it. It's not too hard to type in value at time um, and the rest of that. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Just put them down in the comments below and go ahead and experiment with this. And I wanna see what kind of cool different text effects you can create using this technique. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.